Well, inside our San Francisco studios, Mike Am and Yogi Roth with you. There's a lot to get to. We got the championship games right around the corner, and the latest college football playoff rankings have been revealed. Not a huge surprise. Alabama dropped. Maybe the amount that they dropped might have been the shocker. Uh, now currently sitting at 12. They dropped seven spots after their loss against Auburn. Uh, yeah, I guess by Felicia might be the best way to describe their situation. It's actually their worst ranking in the CFP era. They have never been worse than six. The good news is, and we heard Kyle Whittingham following a win against Colorado, say it to his team in the locker room. Alabama is lost. He knew they would move up a spot. They did to number five, Oklahoma six, Baylor seven. The national conversation for that fourth spot is up for a couple one lost teams right now. Currently, Georgia sits in it, but Yogi, you know, they play LSU in that championship game. You got to imagine, in my mind, hasn't the committee already said Utah's grabbing that final spot? When you just consider this, they don't have a win against a top 25 opponent, and yet they're still in front of Oklahoma. Well, look, we had Rob Mullins on your show, right? The pregame show on Saturday up in Eugene, and he said, reading between the tea leaves, like, they get, as in the committee, how talented Utah is. Sure. And they get that their defense is full of NFL dues. They understand the number one rushing defense in the country. They understand that offensively they're averaging 6.9 yards per play, which is good as, I believe, it's ninth best in the entire nation on offense. So. They're not just one-sided, right? You look at Oklahoma. Sure. Offensively, Jalen Hurts, they can deal. You look at Baylor, they're kind of a mixed bag. Like, I think, to me, there's, I would even argue Georgia offensively, they have not been efficient. It's Utah is one of the top four teams consistently in all areas of football. You know, and look, you mentioned some of the stats that, you, that people are going to throw out there about how complete Utah is. I'd also make the argument some of the other metrics in terms of strength of schedule, uh, their ability to win against bowl eligible teams, they, the numbers do favor Utah in that regard as well. Now, I get it, top 25 opponents, Oklahoma's got that uh, covered, but you know, you kind of take it at, at its entirety, and Utah's got, I think, a better argument. Well, look, I mean, if we're going to be truth tellers, right? Because we've been on both sides of this argument, right? There was a year sure. ago where it was Washington State, you know, kind of sitting there with one loss, and we're trying to tell the resume story. It's nothing other than looking at facts. Let's just look at close games, right? Five of Oklahoma's last seven games have been one-score games, wins yeah. or losses. You look at Baylor. They've had six one-score games this year. Utah, two, yeah. all year long, right? One was the loss to SC and then a win on the road in Seattle against Washington. They've been dominating teams since SC, since that loss, Mike, they've beaten teams by an average of 29 points. Like, they're throttling opponents. And I do think that... The committee, based on talking with Rob Mullins, their chair, that the, the path that Utah's taken and the conference and the teams they're playing, they're respected. It's not as though we should feel slighted like, to me, in years past, where USC was ranked, when other teams weren't getting even noticed in terms of the top four teams in the country, even based on their you know, fundamental finish in a Pac-12 championship game. So I think it's a different narrative, and I'm not freaking out. I'm not tripping right now. I'm, if I'm a Utah fan, I'm saying just... Just play clean. Even though it'll be rainy, it might be bad conditions, just play clean and get a win, and I think they're in. Some more good news from a Utah perspective. Uh, four out of the last five years, the team that has sat fifth in the college football playoff rankings before the championship games have ultimately been in the college football playoff. Give me the, the doomsday scenario right now if you're a Utah fan. Well, I want to challenge the doomsday scenario. Like, okay. It's like the whole country has just accepted that even Clemson, Ohio State, or LSU, if they lose, they're automatically in. And we live in this world that's like kind of uh, du in duality right now in college football, right? There's this one world of you got to live in metrics. Everything is metric based. And that was the BCS. That world is over. We've already done that. Well, that's my point. We now say that every week in college football is amazing because it's a playing game. Well, what world exists if you lose your last game and you don't win your championship? And let's just say LSU, for instance, don't play nine conference champion or nine conference games. Why do you automatically get in? You didn't play yourself in. In fact, sure. you played yourself out. So I wonder, and I wouldn't, I'd kind of be intrigued to see what happened if Georgia wins. You know, what does the committee really do? Are they trying to put in the four best today, the four best bodies of work? Because there's an argument for Utah in both cases. Like they, they can't, in my opinion, they can't be challenged or knocked down based on the lack of success of their opponents. Right? It's not their fault that sure. their schedule didn't include, call it, 
Texas early on in the season, which was a ranked team at the time, or some of the teams that LSU has beaten throughout the season. So I wonder if they look at the positives of one team and the negatives of another, which would be an LSU loss and Utah continually winning and potentially dominating. I'm not going to lie, I don't want to see what happens in that scenario if I'm a Utah fan. Because I think there is a world where LSU obviously would still manage its way to get in. From a Big 12 perspective, do you think it matters that Baylor right now sits 7th and Oregon now sits 13th? Like, I, does that difference in terms of what Oklahoma and Utah are playing in the Pac-12 championship game, does that matter to you? It doesn't to me right now, based okay. on what we just talked about. Like, it seems as though Utah is, like, strongly holding the number 5 spot. They're not in the ebb and flow of 6-7, right, which is the conversation of Baylor and Oklahoma right now. So I think that they'll be all right. What does concern me is all of a sudden we're splitting hairs. And then is the strength of schedule, is it the 93rd best strength of schedule, the 90th or the 85th? Like, what's the difference between a couple of those? If that's what we're deciding the playoff on, then we should just go back to the BCS. To me, we need to be going on, what does Ronnie Lott think in the room? What does Todd Stansberry think in the room? What do the people's eyes tell them? Like, they're experts. They're the 13 most uh, well thought out after people that can speak to college football in the playoff. Let's let them do that. And if that's the case, then I'm not worried about the close range. I don't, I don't want to beat a dead horse because I made reference to this, but I do think about this logically. If Utah, if you want to go off of resumes and Utah doesn't have a win currently against a team that's sitting in the top 25 and yet still sits fifth in the college football playoff rankings, Oklahoma has a couple of those wins and yet they're behind them. If Utah beats Oregon, they sit 13th. Like, to me, in what world do we live in where they could possibly jump behind Oklahoma? Like, I just don't understand how that could even be possible. Right, because the metrics would tell you that you should move Oklahoma up right now. But Oklahoma, if the, right? the metrics would it, also it, say Oklahoma should be in front of Utah, that, then that's if you're going to go by that, yeah. yeah exactly. So I, I think we go back to what Rob told us over the weekend and what we see every week. I mean, it's utter yeah. dominance, right? 11 of their 12 opponents, they've held under 100 yards rushing. Like, what world does that even exist? And oh, by the way, the one that got 100 yards rushing, they threw for 25 yards. I called yeah. that game. It was Arizona State. So I, I really think, and, I, and you know me, I want to get riled up on this, yeah. but I don't, I don't think we necessarily need to right now. I think the committee has said Utah has been dominant. Can they do it now against their most challenging opponent? who can run the football, who can play a physical style, which Ohio State does, if yep. they were to meet them as the number one seed in the playoff, if they were the number four. That's what we're going to find out on Friday night. Uh, I know you're not done talking about this. Oh, no. no, we got a lot to get to inside Pac-12 football. How about this guest list? Mario Cristobal is going to be on the show. Kyle Whittingham is going to be on the show. We'll also get Kirk Herbstreit from ESPN. His thoughts on the playoff. We'll ask him the question that I just posed to you. In what world do we live in where Utah is not in the playoff as long as they handle business Friday night at Levi Stadium in the Pac-12 championship game? And oh, by the way, we will be at Levi's for that one. You don't want to miss the pregame show starting at 4 p.m. Pacific time Friday night.